Who is Lord Krishna? Lord Krishna is one of the most revered deities in Hinduism, worshipped as the eighth incarnation, avatar, of the god Vishnu, who is part of the Hindu trinity, Trimurti, alongside Brahma and Shiva. Krishna's life and teachings are central to several key texts in Hinduism, including the Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Gita, and the Bhagavata Purana. Divine Birth Krishna was born in Mathura to Devki and Vasudeva. His birth is considered miraculous, as it was foretold that he would kill the tyrannical king Kamsa, who was his uncle. To protect him from Kamsa, Krishna was secretly taken to Gokul, where he was raised by Yashoda and Nanda. Childhood and Youth Krishna is known for his playful and mischievous childhood, where he performed many miracles, like lifting the Govardhan hill and slaying demons sent by Kamsa. He is also famous for his divine love stories with Ratha and the Gopis, cowherd girls, of Vrindavan. Role in the Mahabharata Krishna played a crucial role in the Mahabharata, where he served as a guide and charioteer to Arjuna during the Kurukshetra War. His discourse to Arjuna, known as the Bhagavad Gita, is one of the most important spiritual texts in Hindu philosophy. Philosopher and statesman, beyond his divine aspects, Krishna is also seen as a great philosopher, diplomat, and statesman. He advocated for dharma, righteousness, and played a key role in resolving conflicts and guiding the Pandavas to victory in the Mahabharata. Why did Lord Krishna build Dvarka? Krishna built Dvarka primarily to protect his people, the Yadavas, from continuous threats and attacks, and to establish a safe and prosperous city for them. After Krishna defeated his tyrannical uncle, Kamsa, the king of Mathura, the city faced repeated attacks from Kamsa's allies, particularly Jarasandha, the powerful king of Magadha. Jarasandha attacked Mathura 17 times with large armies, causing significant destruction and threatening the safety of the Yadava people. To avoid unnecessary bloodshed and protect his people, Krishna decided to move them to a safer location. Strategic Relocation Krishna chose to relocate his people to a remote and secure location on the western coast of India. The area was less accessible to invaders and offered a strategic advantage for defense. Building a new city, Krishna, with the help of divine powers, is said to have built the magnificent city of Dvarka. The city was well-planned, fortified, and prosperous, with grand palaces, harbors, and advanced infrastructure. Dvarka became the capital of the Yadava kingdom and a hub of culture, commerce, and spirituality. Avoiding conflict By moving the Yadavas to Dvarka, Krishna avoided direct confrontation with Jarasandha, who could have caused widespread destruction in Mathura. This move exemplified Krishna's diplomatic and strategic acumen, focusing on the well-being of his people rather than engaging in endless wars. Establishing a new center Dvarka was not just a safe haven but also a new cultural and spiritual center. It became associated with Krishna's rule, wisdom, and divinity, serving as a symbol of his leadership and his role as a protector of dharma, righteousness. Significance of Dvarka Dvarka represented Krishna's efforts to create a peaceful and prosperous environment for his people, away from the constant threats they faced in Mathura. It symbolized the ideal of a righteous and just kingdom, where Dharma was upheld, and the people could live in harmony. The construction of Dvarka also highlights Krishna's role as a divine leader who prioritized the welfare of his followers and used his wisdom and power to protect them from harm. Is Dvarka built by Krishna under the ocean? Dvarka, also known as Dvaraka, is an ancient city in Indian mythology and history. According to Hindu tradition, it was built by Lord Krishna and is one of the seven most ancient cities, Saptapuri, in India. Dvarka is described as a magnificent city built by Krishna after he left Mathura. It was said to be located on the western coast of India, on the banks of the Gomti River, in what is now the state of Gujarat. According to the Mahabharata and other ancient texts, Dvarka was a golden city with many palaces, harbors, and docks. It was considered a highly advanced and wealthy city. Mythology states that after Krishna departed from the earth, the city of Dvarka was submerged into the sea. This event is often considered part of the cyclic destruction and recreation of the world, a concept known as pralaya in Hinduism. In recent times, 
Marine archaeologists have discovered the remains of an ancient city submerged off the coast of modern Dvarka in Gujarat. These findings have led some to speculate that the ruins could be remnants of the historical Dvarka mentioned in the scriptures. While these discoveries are intriguing, there is ongoing debate about whether they are indeed the remains of the Dvarka described in the Mahabharata, or if they belong to a different civilization from around the same period. In summary, the legend of Dvarka as a city built by Krishna and submerged under the ocean is a fascinating blend of mythology and history, with some archaeological evidence suggesting that the city might have had a real-world counterpart. However, the exact nature of this connection remains a subject of research and debate. The Lost City of Dvarka is a book authored by Indian archaeologist and historian S. R. Rao. This book explores the legendary city of Dvarka, which, according to Hindu mythology, was built by Lord Krishna and later submerged under the sea. S. R. Rao's work is significant because it ties the mythological narratives with archaeological evidence, offering insights into the possible historical basis of the ancient city. The book delves into the mythological accounts of Dvarka as described in ancient Hindu scriptures, including the Mahabharata and the Bhagavata Purana. It recounts how Krishna established the city and how it was eventually submerged into the ocean. S. R. Rao led marine archaeological expeditions in the Arabian Sea, near the modern-day city of Dvarka in Gujarat, India. The book details the findings of these underwater explorations, which include structures, pottery, and other artifacts that suggest the existence of an ancient city that could be linked to the legendary Dvarka. The book provides a historical and cultural analysis of the artifacts discovered, linking them to the time period traditionally associated with Krishna, around 3000 BCE. Rao argues that these findings provide evidence that Dvarka was a real city and that it was indeed submerged by rising sea levels. Rao discusses the methodologies used in marine archaeology, including the challenges of underwater exploration. He also presents theories about how and why the city may have been submerged, considering geological and climatic factors. The book suggests that the discoveries at Dvarka have significant implications for understanding ancient Indian history and the connection between myth and reality in Indian culture. The Lost City of Dvarka is considered an important work because it attempts to bridge the gap between mythology and history. S. R. Rao's archaeological findings have been instrumental in sparking interest in the possibility that the legendary city of Dvarka might have a historical basis, leading to further research and exploration in the field. The book has been influential in the fields of marine archaeology and the study of ancient Indian civilization, offering a compelling narrative that combines scholarly research with the rich cultural heritage of India.